In every generation, there have been revivals, massive moves of the spirit that changed the course of history. In every revival, there were believers like you who chose to answer the call, to become the one in their generation. Discover your call to be the one in your generation. We're about to take you face to face with history. Welcome to Revival Radio TV and welcome to the audience. Give yourself a hand, would you? Hey, glad you're here. Well, as you see, we've got a live audience here today and we're going to cover some topics that I know you're going to enjoy, especially with my guest. So first off, I want to introduce my guest, Dean Sykes. Dean, thank you, sir. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. So, Dean, you're not a stranger to Revival Radio TV, and we've done programs before, and I'm, every time, and Linda, correct me if I'm wrong, but every time we air these, we get some other testimonies mm. that come back of kids' lives yeah. changed, adults that are dealing with hurts. So, real quickly, because we're going to get into some new stuff today, sure. I want you to explain to those watching who you are and what your ministry is. Sure. We, have, we began on January 1st, 1993. And it's, it is a ministry that is specifically dedicated to bringing hope to the hopeless. And our uh, outreach is continually in high schools, literally across America and around the world. We could take every single week of, we're on the road talking with teenagers about how their lives matter, how God created them on purpose uh, with, with a mission and that for relationships. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we, we attack that, which is attacking teenagers. And right. we do it by the word and we do it in a, in a very non-religious way sharing with young people that, you know what, your lives really do matter. And if you weren't here, we would all be missing something very spe yeah. just special called you. Right. So. And, you know, Dean, since Pastor George and Terry and me, these texts, and things seem to be accelerating this year. Yeah. Then what you, give some of the reports of what happened. So you go into high schools yep. and not necessarily Christian schools, okay? He yep. goes in the public school yep. system and they open their doors for you. What happens? Well, you know, for the first decade, we did all, all public high schools. The second decade, all Christian high schools. And the third decade, when we began, God really said, I'm going to show you how to do both. And it's called You Matter. And, you know, we, the other day, just for an example, we were, we were in a school in, um, in Ohio. And as when we got through speaking, uh, we always have students who come. They, they want to just, they want to talk. And most, most students I've realized in all these years of doing this, it's not necessarily that they want to talk, but they want to be heard. They want to be heard. And this young man walked up to me. He's about 6'4". He shook my hand and said, thank you for telling me that I matter. I said, you're welcome, bud, because you do matter. Then everything changed and his eyes filled with tears. And he said, can I give you something? And I brought it today. He handed me this 12-gauge shotgun shell. And he said, I was going to use this this afternoon. Mm. But I heard those words, you matter. And I was like, man, that's mission accomplished. And only God could do that. You know, yeah. so... I, and I share with parents, you know, always be willing to be, say what's on the inside because mm -hmm. we don't know. All I knew is what the Lord told me to tell. We have stories after stories of young people who are, who are getting the truth. And uh, I'll tell you a quick one. I'm in a school. I get through speaking. A young man walks up to me and goes, hey, I, I like what you said with that God thing. I don't believe. I said, okay, well, you will. He said, what do you mean? I said, man, I'm not going to try to talk you into this because if I could talk you into it, somebody better than me could talk you out of it. So I walked off to talk to teenagers. He grabbed my arm and said, wait a minute, aren't you, aren't you going to, I said, you told me you didn't believe. And I was doing what the Lord had told me to do at this point. He says, well, I, I, I want to believe. I said, do you want to receive Jesus? He said, I think I do. I said, it's a good idea. <laughs> and I, I led him to the Lord right there. He walks off. I go talk to all these other students who are waiting to talk. It wasn't five minutes. This young man walks up to me, grabs my arm and goes, hey, hey, Mr. Dean. I always laugh at that, Mr. Dean. I go, yeah, man. I said, I'm working right now. I'm, I'm working. I got a lot of kids here. And he had his best friend. He said, this is my best friend called his name. He said, he needs Jesus like I did. Would you help me introduce him to Jesus? And I thought, this kid's an evangelist and doesn't even know it. Because yeah. the first thing he thought about was my best friend needs to experience what I just experienced. Came up to me saying, I don't, I don't know if I believe this stuff. Well, okay. It's, it's your choice. And I've learned that if you don't talk at kids or to kids, but you talk with them, they'll engage. And if you don't preach at them, but give them some space. Right. Let them know that, you know what, okay. And I told him, I said, well, here's, here's the only hope you got. You better pray and I'll pray with you that God doesn't decide Jesus, send Jesus back in the next 60 seconds or you're going straight to hell. 
And he looked at me and went, he said, what? I said, well, that's the truth. If Jesus comes back and you haven't received him as your Lord or your Savior, you're going to hell. Yeah. And enjoy the journey because that's where you're heading. And it, it, that's why God anoints us with teenagers because I do not play games. It is just the truth. Amen. So, Dean, you know, for those of us that are older <laughs> than high school age, you know, when you hold up this shotgun shell and you talk about that, it, it's shocking. Mm. I, I really don't remember this in no, high school. Nor do I. I all I remember is, you know, running in the halls and maybe drinking beer yeah. was yeah. how bad that was. And um, so this is shocking to most adults. Like, how did we get to this place? What happened? Well, go back to the early 1960s. The, the polling back then says the three greatest challenges in public high schools were kids running in the hallways, being late to class, and chewing bubblegum during school. In the early 60s, when they took God out of a God-centered society, leaving us with a Godless society, what happens? You go forward 40 plus years and you have that, that whole thing of, I mean, I've spoken at schools, I've had the school shootings, and they're going, you can go in there and say anything you want to say. You can pray. I'm like, well, if you'd have had me in here earlier, or somebody who knows what they're doing here, yeah. who, we, we wouldn't be having a school shooting here. And so what happens is you take God out of that environment and suddenly you have John 10, 10 happening, still kill, destroy. And then you have the, the internet is a phenomenal tool, but I meet so many teenagers who are isolated in their own world by choice. Mm. They're on social media where they can reach the world. But it, if you're still checking your likes, you're not delivered. Yeah. If you're still seeing how many people like my Facebook post or how many retweets did I get and you find your value in that, I tell young people every day, you have not yet been delivered from yourself because you're finding your identity in how many other people like what you're doing. And they're not your friends for the love, for the love of God. They don't even know you. Right. They don't know you. I mean, I, I've, got, I've got so many friends on Facebook. I, I, it's, it's, a, it's a public place. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know these people. I know. I'm thankful that they're there. I'm thankful they're tuning in, but they're not. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. that's part of why I see what we're seeing happening. Okay, so those of us that don't have, even have kids in high school anymore, you know, what do we do? You know, we talk about being the one and bringing revival to your, to your family, to your city, to your community, and obviously your state and the world. So what do we do other than pray for people like you that are right. doing this? You know, it's, it's almost intimidating to a lot of us that don't do what you do because it's like, I don't know where to start. I don't know how to help. What is it that we need to do? Where do we start? Teenagers spell love, T-I-M-E, time. Okay. Be available. You don't, you don't, I mean, not everybody's called to do what you're doing right. or what your audience is doing today. Not everybody's called to, to go speak to high school students. I mean, people, I have people tell me all the time, I, I would go to the backside of the furthest continent as opposed to go to a high school gymnasium and talk to all these students. But you know what? Could you talk to one? Is there a young person in your life that you go, hey, let's go get a burger? How's life? I mean, the Bible says very clearly, Proverbs, Living Bible, if you're breathing, God has something scheduled for you to do today. Right. So, I mean, my deal, even, even as someone who does this professionally for a living as ministry, I still, I still deal one-on-one -on -one with teenagers, people that God's put in our lives through the years. Yeah. You know, they're not impressed with what we do. They just, they know Lori, my wife and I, is just Dean and Lori. And we hang out with them. We'll, we'll, we'll go out and have dinner or whatever. We'll sit by a pool and talk to them. The, the, the most powerful times we have are the friends of our, our kids who are, you know, our, our children are, are now basically adults, but they're, they've had the same friends growing up and they've become family too. They go on vacation with us. I'm like, you're going with us? Okay. But I have yeah. these great times with these kids just sitting there talking with them, just loving on them, not preaching at them, not trying to convince them, just going, tell me how your life's going. What's going on with you? What's, what's hurting today? And you know, you make a, you said a point there that I think that we have a tendency um, to blow right past because we're, we're ready to whip out our CD series and yep. our tape sets from, and our eight tracks and, you know, yep. <laughs> those of us that are older <laughs> and, and preach the word yep. to them because we know that's what they need. And it, yep. is it is what they need. But what you're saying is really spending time so, to get to have relationship. relationship. And that's what this is all about. At the end of the day, kids don't care how much you know until they know how much you actually really do care. And I, and I tell teenagers, every time I, I get to ministry, I go, you know, I'm, we don't ever charge anybody anything. I'm not here to take anything from you. I am here to give. Right. And it disarms them. Because I show up kind of like this or wear jeans on, and I just, I walk around, there's no podium, yeah. just a mic and a bottle of water, and I just talk. And it, listen, people ask me all the time, how do you, I, I, all I can tell you is God does this. I, it makes no sense. 
I, I stopped trying to figure it out a long time ago because he opens the doors. Right. He sends us. And there's always in every audience, there's always a, just a number of teenagers who are just so hungry to know that their lives matter. If today was the last day of your life and this thing called life came to an abrupt end, would you go to heaven or hell? Well, I don't know. If you don't know, I can assure you, it's hell. Well, I go to church. My car goes to church, it's not going to heaven. Well, I mean, I signed a card, that's all wonderful. Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus, period? There, there are those here today who this pounding is so severe. How do you know I have a pounding in the center of my chest? Because I have the same one in my center of my chest. That's how God always shows me we're onto something. Here's what I'm gonna ask you. If you would say to me, Dean, I've not made that choice. I've not made Jesus Lord of my life. When I get to three, I'm not gonna embarrass you. I'm not gonna point you out. Nobody's watching. This is between you and God. When I get to three, hands up, ready? Don't let pride stop you. One, I do this every day. Thousands, hundreds of thousands respond. Two, ready? One, two, three, hands up, quick. Hurry, hands up, quick. Get them a pie. I know you're here. Yeah, I see your hands. I know you're here. Rejection. Boy, when I started talking about that, you should have seen your faces. If today you have the guts to say to me, hey, you're talking to me. It was my best friend, maybe. It was the guy I was dating. It was the girl I was dating. It was my mom. It was my dad. It, it was the person I trusted, and they hurt me. And I have this thing called rejection. I haven't known what to do with it yet. And now I'm beginning to understand the reason that I have this pain on the inside. Let me help you with something. If you and I don't deal with our emotions, our emotions are going to deal with us. This is the hardest question I ask teenagers. It is the second most important question I ask teenagers. It is the question that drives me to my knees every single day because of the answers I get, and I know you're here. If suicide is a real option and you've got the guts and the courage to say to me, hey, you're talking to me. Maybe you're just thinking about it. Maybe you're talking about it. Maybe you've got it planned. God sent us here today to say to you, yes, there is an appointed time for you to be born and to die, and God doesn't need your help on either appointments. Everyone look right up here at me. Look right up here. If you raise your hand, I'm not saved, I'm going straight to hell. I'm dealing with rejection or suicide is a real option. When I get to three, I'm going to ask you to get out of your seat. It always takes one person and then masses always follow. And here's the cool thing. I don't know why you're coming. Only God knows. One, two, three, move now. I'm not playing. Move now. Let's go. That's him. That's him. He's all over you. There he is. There he is. There he is. There he is. Relax. Jesus. Jesus. Good morning. Thank you. Right here. It's okay. Look at me. What's your name? Ashley. Father, touch Ashley as only you can. When I said you're smart, I'm telling you, that's what the Lord told me. You are. Do something with it. Raise your hands. Why do I say raise your hands? Because no matter where you are on the planet, raising your hands is a universal sign there is of the, of the surrender. You're going to, look here, buddy. He's going to preach. God, he's going to preach. Don't ever live your life by a prophetic word. Let God, put it on a shelf. Let God confirm it with two or three witnesses. That's how he always does it. Today, I'm either planting a seed or I'm watering a seed. But you let God do that which only God can do. Honey, get ready. Get ready. There's the anointing. You like to teach? It's God, the anointing that teaches all over you. Thank you. Favor, Psalm 512. <laughs> Psalm 512. Favor's coming on your life. Just relax. Just relax. Watch it, watch it. Relax, honey. Stay, put your hands up. Put your hands up. Go say, I surrender. I surrender. There you go. That's all you got to say is I surrender. Then, minute. Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Father. <laughs> that's, the, that's the joy of the Lord. That's what that is. What do you want to do with your life? What's God called you to do? Yeah, you do. What do you want to do? If God was standing right here and he said, yes, you can do whatever you want to do, what would you say? I want to. It's not just teenagers. No, it's not. But, and this is, um, first off, if you want to know more about Dean's ministry, it's youmatter.us, youmatter.us, and you can find all about it and help support him. But I, I want to talk about the other side of that, okay. which is not the high school students. Mm -hmm. uh, we all have memories of high school, some good, some bad, some horrible. And, that was mine. Yeah. And so, you know, you have these, these issues 
and there's a lot of hurts out there. So how do we, as adults, handle some of that stuff that happened back in our high school years? Yeah. You know, I was sexually abused at 15. I, I was a Christian in Christian school. All my friends were Christian. I went to church every time the doors were open. And somehow I got sexually abused and I didn't tell anyone for 22 years. Mm. Well, let me just help everybody for a second here. If you and I don't deal with our emotions, our emotions are going to deal with us. Right. They do not go away. And it wasn't until I went to the Lord and said, I cannot fix this one. I have to have you as not only my Lord and Savior, as my healer. Yeah. And it comes down to just getting gut honest and going, he already knows all this. But it's when we bring that pain to him. And I, I literally said, if you can do anything with this, if you can turn, it's a cliche, but this pain into a purpose, mm -hmm. I'll do it. And well, I'm telling you, and it, it wasn't like he all of a sudden just moment, it was done. It was a process. I've learned that I've, one of the things I've learned the most about the Lord is he can do anything he wants to do, however he wants to do it. But boy, he's a God of process. Mm. And for me, it was the process of dealing with why, why did that happen? And here's the most important lesson I learned and I've shared it with teenagers every day, the power of forgiveness. You would be astonished maybe to know at the end of our assemblies, I always ask two or three, four questions. And one of the questions I ask is there's someone in your life today that you see their face with your eyes closed that you know in your heart you need to forgive. 85% of the audience is every single school raised their hand. Hmm. The bigger issue is rejection. How so? Because rejection says you don't matter. Right. Rejection says what happened to you doesn't matter. And if you weren't here, it wouldn't matter. And I, I, I was, I asked the question one day in a, in a public high school, I said, if you're here today and you feel like you've been rejected and there were 1700 plus teenagers there that day, 100, like 102 teenage, uh, teachers rather around the base of this gymnasium. If you've been rejected and you got the guts to say so, when I get to three, raise your hand. Before I got to two, hands are going up. 1,074 teenagers raised their hand that day. Wow. It's right. And that's what leads to suicide. Unforgiveness, rejection. And I talked to Brother Copeland about this, that suicide is the quickest death there is. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's like that. And I've talked to so many teenagers who have, I've talked to parents for that, who dealt with that issue and attempted it, but survived it. And they're like, Dean, you can't imagine the darkness that comes right as I'm making that decision. And it's just, and it's a spirit. We know what that is. Sure. But it's, it's something that, and a lot of parents have not dealt with what's going on in here and they raise kids and guess what happens? Unhealthy parents raise unhealthy kids until the word is injected into their lives. Right. So that, that's what we're seeing so much of, so much of. There's another aspect of your ministry that I've seen in operation, and that's Dean, you flow. I don't know if you guys have seen Dean in this area, but he, he really flows in the supernatural. Mm. And I've seen you take a, I hate to say it this way, but I've seen you take a part of an audience <laughs> <laughs> and go right down the line and tell people. Yeah. How, did, how did that happen? The words of knowledge. Yep. And, and it, it was on a Sunday night um, back in 1995. I remember right where I was um, in a church, a youth service. And I gave an altar call for salvation. But when I got down there, I had no idea this gift even was even resident in my life, much less operational. I got down and I heard the voice of the Lord say this to this person. And I did it and they fell out. He, I went to the next person, say this to this person. I did it. An hour and a half later, I had ministered literally a word of knowledge to every single teenager in that room. And I didn't know where it came. I, mean, I, was, I knew it came from God, but I was like, where, why tonight? I mean, where did this happen? And it began me on a journey of digging so deep into this word right. and praying so much in the spirit. Because now what happens is, and you know, people go, well, you're in a public high school. How can you do it? Well, you've got to use wisdom. You know, you're sure. not going to go in there and shout and scream and bring your Bibles out. But there are ways to reach people in, in very, God's, God's very creative in how he does this. And I, I oftentimes go over to a student, just put my hand on their shoulder, maybe 1,500 kids in the audience. And go, you know what, man, you got a lot of potential, but the whole time I'm going, Lord, you're telling me to tell this young person he's got potential and my hand is a point of contact and I'm laying hands on him. He doesn't even know it. Right. But I'm doing it in faith and I'm doing it in obedience. And so when you're, when you operate in these gifts, everything rises and falls on the love factor. It tells us pursue love and, and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you prophesy. I have young, so many teenagers, so many mom and dads go, would you pray that I, that I receive that gift? I go, mm, nope. Not yet. Go look at that one verse. 
Before you get all these gifts working, there's two words you got to really get. Pursue love. Mm. Love's the key there. I just love teenagers. Yeah. I hated school. I hated, yeah. I had one half of one semester of speech in high school and was petrified every day of that, those six weeks. Hated it. So God has a sense of humor. Yeah. I speak all the time and yeah. I do it in high school. That's your job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's the quickest way to find out what your career is. What is it you don't like? Yeah. So. What, what's what's happening now? What's well, you know, a lot of lot of things are happening in schools um, from the standpoint of young people who are, you know, they, they they're living this these isolated lives, but it's like it's like the young person who comes over and says, "Can we talk?" But they don't want to do it in front of anyone, and that's pretty normal through the years, but is the stories are getting much more in depth, right? You know. I mean, if, if I could stand here for the next, we could do three or four programs on just testimonies from the road. You know, where I was in a school, a young man came up to me and said, hey, I, I got a shotgun and had two shells in it. I pulled the trigger three times, it didn't fire. I got a revolver, had five bullets. I pulled the trigger six times, it wouldn't fire. I OD'd, they rushed me to the hospital, they pumped my stomach and he says, do you think God has a plan for my life? Let's go with yeah. Yep. Let's yeah. go with yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking so. But my question to that young person is, wait a minute, why? What, what's so bad about going on in your life that it's, and I, and I literally was just sit and talk with them. We literally just sit on a bleacher or in a, th in a theater setting. And you know what happens? They start talking and they're so hungry for it. So I think for, to an audience like this today, it's, you know, you don't have to be a professional. You, you don't have to be called to, to minister to teenagers. Can you listen? Can you maybe say, you're going to make it? I mean, I cannot tell you how many times young people have said to me, just thank you for telling me I'm going to make it. They just want somebody to believe in them. Right. And, and where we are spiritually, I believe it's so dark now. It is yeah. so dark. I, literally, you know, we, we, God gave us our airplane. We, we fly literally as the, as the landing gears are dropping and we're coming in, you can sense it in the atmosphere where you're heading. Hmm. If this is going to be dark and you really got to pray harder or this is, you know, there's some people out here who are busting up the foul of the ground and we're moving in. But... I think we're in a season, Gene, where no matter who you are, no matter what your age is, God's given us an assignment to do something about this generation because they need you. They need a mentor. They, they need somebody who will take the time to go on a walk with them, go fish with them, go shoot a gun with them, go read a book with, go to, go, go do whatever, do something. For me, I love bubblegum ice cream. Let's go eat some bubblegum ice cream. You know, let's just. It sounds horrible. Well, no, it's really good. You should try it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, and the, the truth is, as much as we have technology and our smartphones and our computers and our cars talk to us now and everything that goes like that, it seems like the more there is a need for relationship. It, it seems to be more prevalent than yep. ever. Because we, is it because we put things in place? Well, I, think? Yeah, I think it really comes down to, it, it's like with the Lord, you can either have a religion or you can have a relationship. Mm -hmm. So you can't have both. Right. With, 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 with society today, everybody's trying to connect via technology, yeah. but they're missing the element right now of the connection of the heart. Right. It's how, when was the last time if you were a parent, you sat with your teenager and said, I want to know how your life is really going. I want to know who you are going out with tonight. I was recently at a church and the, and the youth pastor said, I did something to my youth group today. I said, what'd you do? He said, I separated them into guys and girls, set the guys in one room. And I said, there's new technology out. He said, he said, this doesn't really exist. I don't know. Maybe it does. He said, but I told him it did just for a point of making a point. He said, the technology is you come in, you plug your, your phone up to this, to this computer and it'll show me every website, everything you've been on in that in the last 30 days. He said, Dean, every single one of my guys said, you're not looking at my phone except one. You see, Teenagers, especially, if they can't find connectivity in the home, they're going to go look for it somewhere else. Right. And I meet so many of them who are looking for it in all the wrong places. I meet so many just phenomenal young ladies yeah. who come up to me and they go, I don't know if God can forgive me for what I did last night. I say, you know, don't even tell me. I don't care what you did last night. It doesn't matter. It's over. And yet God can forgive you anything. And we talk through that process but they're just hurting. And so I asked them, do you talk to your parents? No, I don't. Why? Um, I, I, they're just too busy. Too busy. But it goes back to that, if it's broken at the home front, how can it be working out, out, out here? 
And so that's what we're trying to get, not only the teenagers, but their parents to kind of come back to a table. Let's just sit around and talk. Some of the most awkward, I mean, I, I, I'll, I'm always just as transparent as I know how to be. Some of the most awkward moments in our personal home as our kids were growing up, were sitting around a table with no telephone. Let's talk. And they all looked to me because I'm dad. Yeah. And I failed. I did. Mm-hmm. And I had to go back later in life and go, you know, kids, I repent. I just, I got too busy. I just got too busy doing for God that I forgot to do what was most important here. And my wife would always tell me, Dean, if, if we don't have it right here, you're not qualified. I don't care how many people know you, how many people you speak. None of that matter. What matters is when we stand before God, are we going to be able to hear well done as a husband and wife, mm-hmm. as a mom right. and dad? So that began a journey for us of really the most supernatural thing in my life is in our ministry. It's our family. So if people were to take something from today and apply it in their life, what would it be? Be real, be transparent, call your own fouls as a parent, especially if you mess up, you know, let your kids know. I mean, that was wrong. I repent. Be available. Take time with your young people. Go. If you don't have teenagers in your life, go find some. They won't, it won't be hard. I promise you. Go to a ball field. Go to a soccer field. Go, go somewhere where there are teenagers. Just, I promise you, if you ask the Holy Ghost to get, I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do. I'm yours. Show me what to do. I promise you, he will put you in the life of someone. Yeah. He will. Sure. And as you build those relationships, I mean, it's simply a matter of, again, it's not necessarily preaching at them. It's just being there. Just loving on them. If you want these gifts, I mean, I, I've asked the Lord to increase the gifts he's given me. And he said, increase your love. Oh, I see how that works. Mm-hmm. And so, and he has, you know, the, that gift operates. And we were taping something the other day for television. And right in the middle of the broadcast, the, the Lord had a word for a teenage young lady in Topeka, Kansas. And I'm like, Lord, I, only you know when this is actually going to show but when it does, there's going to be some young lady in Topeka, Kansas, who's going to hear a word from God. She's going to go, that guy's talking to me. Yeah. So. So we have to embrace the supernatural. And, you know, you were saying something that I remembered. And because some of our audiences are, they've got grandkids. Yeah. My grandfather died when I was 12. Mm-hmm. But I have so many memories of him spending time with me. I was telling my wife, Terry, the other day about how he would... My sister and my mother and my grandmother all went to some women's club thing in Atlanta. And he would pick me up and I look forward to it too because all we did was we, we went to McDonald's and I got to get a chocolate shake. See there. You know, and it was huge. And that was when you were under 12. Yeah. We won't say how old you are today, but go forward all yeah. those years. And it's, look at it. You're it's still, still. You're there. You're right, oh, there, right there. You're right there at McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. I, that, and that proves the point. Yeah. It was really a big deal. Thank you, Dean, for being oh, thank here today. Thank you. Appreciate it so much. Love you, buddy. Love you. Good night.